Some say LUTs are essential in any colorist's toolbox, while others say you should never ever use them. So what's the deal? To find out, we should first understand what LUTs are and how they work. LUT is short for lookup table. It's similar to the table you used for multiplication in elementary school. It's a quick way of seeing what two values multiply together give. But note that this table only has input values between 0 and 10 and that the step size is 1, meaning you have 4, you have 5, but you don't have 4.5. If, for example, we want to know how much 4.5 times 5 is, well, the multiplication table doesn't have a concrete answer for us, so we have to guess based on the nearest values and, well, we'll never get a straight answer. And if we're interested in knowing how much 3 times 11 is, well, we run into the problem of the limit on the input side. As the biggest number is 10, we don't actually have any idea what 11 times 3 is unless we actually do the maths ourselves, which, well, defeats the idea of this table. And the idea with LUTs is similar. They don't do the mathematical operations themselves, but merely store the results of grading tools used in Resolve. And this has two big advantages. One is that running LUTs always takes the same amount of processing power, no matter the operation that was stored inside. And secondly, well, LUTs can hold all kinds of different color operations, no matter how simple or complicated the original tool was, without ever having to know what the underlying algorithms are. And compared to the multiplication table, with its two inputs and one output, LUTs have one input and one output, though both of those are triplets, the red, green and blue color components of a pixel. And so if we look at the most common .cube LUT file format, then, well, the input values have been omitted. So what we see is just the outputs. Because, well, the inputs are always laid out in the same order and with the same step size. And when it comes to the limits of LUTs, well, most of them are working within the 0 to 1 range, meaning if either the input or the output is above 1 or below 0, then it gets clipped to this range. And this happens especially when working with linear, either going to linear or coming from linear, where values oftentimes happen to be above 1. Also the same way that the multiplication table has a set step size, where it doesn't have 4.5, just 4 and 5, well, lots also have a limited set of input-output pairs, and the rest are, well, guessed, or interpolated, to use the correct technical term. You may have heard of 33-point LUTs. 33 refers to this precision. With this LUT, there are 33 steps for each component, meaning a total number of 33 times 33 times 33 red, green and blue value combinations. The most common LUTs are 33-point, but we also have 17-point and 65-point LUTs. Which brings up the question of, well, why ever use anything under 65-point, as that is the most precise one of the three? Well, two things. File size and processing power. Bigger LUTs just need more. And many cameras and displays just don't have enough of those two. So we have to be happy with 33-point LUTs being a happy medium. Another limitation of LUTs is that they don't know where a pixel is located in the image. They process each one in isolation without consideration of the surrounding pixels, and as such, every part of the image is treated exactly the same. This means a lot cannot store spatial operations, for example, grain, halation, or vignetting. And I'll re-emphasize that most pixels going through a lot don't have exact matches but get interpolated based on the nearest values. So with this interpolation, well, we have different methods or algorithms, if you will, to do this. For example, in Resolve under Project Settings, Column Management, we have two such algorithms available. Trilinear, which is the default, and tetrahedral. And well, you should 
always set this to tetrahedral because it just gives better results. And I guess the only reason why it, why trilinear is the default is that it just uses a tiny bit less computational power. But with today's computers, that is not a problem to worry about. So I urge you to set tetrahedral as your default setting. Now that we know a bit about how lots work, let's have a look at what they are used for most often. Well, technically speaking, a lot is a lot. It's a black box that does whatever its author baked into it. But still, I would categorize them in four different buckets. First, we have technical LUTs. These are an alternative to color space transforms used for color management. They change the color space that we're working in, but don't give a creative look, or at least aren't meant to. These are, for example, a lot going from Ari White Gamut Free Log C3 to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, or going from Ari White Gamut Free Log C3 directly to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, ready to monitor. Second, we have Creative LUTs. These apply a creative look to your project, though they don't change the color space. That being said, they are still meant to be used with a specific color space, as using it with another will change the results. For example, a film-like look, or a day-for-night look. In this case, both expecting and outputting Da Vinci White Comet Intermediate. Third, we have viewing or show LUTs. These are a mix of the first two. They are meant for onset monitoring or editing to avoid looking at the log footage, while still only needing a single LUT. For example, the previous film-like look, but now expecting Ari White Gamma 3, Log C3, and outputting Rex 9 Gamma 2.4 ready for monitoring. And last but not least, we have calibration LUTs. These are created for a single display as the result of a calibration process, and make sure that the display shows colors correctly. Now, the LUTs that you find online, including those from manufacturers, are more often than not of the third category, viewing LUTs. They expect a camera's color space as an input and output a suitable color space for a display, while also applying a creative look. The most common problems with these LUTs are, well, first, the input and output color spaces might not be specified, in which case you can't really be confident that you're using them as intended. Second, the LUT is designed to work in Rec. 9, 2.4, in which case you're really not using the full potential of your footage. And last but not least, the LUT just breaks your image, in which case, well, it's just not really designed well. This is why you should always get LUTs from reputable sources, such as camera manufacturers or seasoned colorists. Or, well, there's always the possibility of learning to make LUTs yourself. But that's it from me. I'm Gaur. See you next time.